Industries out of Stanford. Okay. They presented. Cool. And how to use spatial intelligence, vision and radar to essentially turn movement into a digital artifact. <laughs> uh, all right, so I'm here with Tim Carlisle of Zero Key. Um, so those of you who are in, the, are in the community, who are in Mastermind, we did a presentation uh, last week. By the time you're seeing this, it's probably two weeks ago. On spatial intelligence, we had uh, organization from Stanford come in and talk about how we can use vision and radar to turn human movement into a digital artifact. Now what we're going to do is we're going to ask Tim to explain to us how we can use spatial intelligence in a practical manufacturing application to improve first pass yield, quality, et cetera, et cetera. So Tim, do you want to go ahead and give us the 30 second elevator pitch of zero key and then kind of show us what, what it's yeah, made of? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So awesome. we're uh, hyper accurate real time positioning, meaning we can track anything to an accuracy of 1.5 millimeters in 3D. Okay. So in this demo, my wrists are being tracked and our tools being tracked and we're using that to digitize the kind of workflow. And our tool is a electric drill, right? Exactly, like a, okay, correct. A, but yeah, okay. it could be it could be anything. You put a device on and you can see where it is in 3D space. Perfect. And so we're using that information to digitize this kind of workflow that would be really common in a lot of manufacturing environments. Okay. How so, long did it take to set up? So you guys sent me a kit yeah. uh, a couple months ago. Um, how long did it take you to set up this? So if, if we want to go ahead and because we, we have receiving sensors over here, and then yep. we have we have the in, in, the mobile yeah, the mobile sensors here. Yeah. How how long start to finish to, to put this all together? That's the cool thing. So we're integrated with Tulip, meaning it's really quick to get our data into Tulip. And if you're a Tulip user, you know how easy it is to do yep. stuff. So a day to set up a cell like yeah, this. So the kit the kit you guys sent scratch. to me, I did in about five hours. So okay. start to finish, I set it up on my bench. Yep. In about five hours. So nice. It, it, that passes the sniff test. All right. Cool. Man. Yeah. And then right. the, the tulip, I say three hours for the tulip stuff. Okay. That's how long it took me to build this app. So okay. set up zones around uh, the bins. So it's geofenced 3D zones around the bins, around the bolts that will sequence. Okay. Um, and that's all done in tulip with low code, no code. So. Perfect. And so it's as an app. You have a zero key app. Exactly. Right? And we have four custom widgets on the tulip library. Okay, awesome. Well. So what is the, explain the process to us that we have. Sure. So I'll just go through it live. Uh, okay. So as I reach into bins, we can see that uh, we're using the collision of my wrist entering the zone to detect that I've reached into the correct bin. Then when I place the part, we can see that it's placed in the assembly jig. Okay. So we're doing that in validating uh, you know, that the user's doing everything properly in real time. If I make a mistake, like if I go to bin five when it's telling me bin three, we flag that error right away. Uh, we have an incorrect pick, an error count come up. You could do anything with that. Uh, you, know, you could have a manager be notified or whatever needs to be done, but in this case, we're able to catch that error in real time and correct it, um, eliminating you know a quality control issue. So, real quick, I just want to go through some. So, for those of you who are in who are manufacturing engineers, one of your biggest problems is we want to calculate efficiency. In order to calculate efficiency, one of the things we have to do we have to do is we have to compare theoretical cycle time with actual cycle time. That's one of the first things we have to do. Each one, of these, each one of these movements is a digital event with a rising edge and a falling edge. And that is native to the implementation. So this is a paradigm shift in the way that we think about manufacturing. So very important to understand that each of these movements is creating a rising edge and a falling edge of a, of a digital event. And that is a digital event that we can learn from over time. Think about writing an algorithm that analyzes the rising and falling edges of this manufacturing process over time to help us in our lean process of eliminating steps if we could, right? So anyway, go ahead. That's a, that's a great point. And yeah, just to speak to that, we see the step time for each individual step. And so for something like this, that's so hard to model any other way. Right. You don't typically get that data. Correct. Um, and so same thing, because we're uh, 1.5 millimeter accurate, we can actually tell these individual bolts apart. So if I go to the incorrect bolt here, you see we trigger an error. And then as I go through the process correctly, uh, we're able to validate that this was built uh, to spec. And this could be integrated with a smart tool. It's not for our demo. So right, you could something actually, with torque. Something exactly, torque. you could have torque, sequence, right. uh, and uh, angle for each bolt. 
So a lot of times, like our, our customers are, you know, these huge companies, uh, big manufacturers that we think of as, you know, just being like robot arms, highly automated. But the fact is, there's still a lot of human-centric processes, yep. and they're validating by away. literally marking with a with a felt marker, right. um, and you know that leads to the potential for huge quality control right. issues, recalls, things like that. So we can build this sort of digital certificate that everything is done correctly using spatial intelligence. And what we're doing is we're we're transforming human movement and action into digital events. And then digital events are then transformed into information that we take action on. The one other thing I want to point out here, the obvious question would be, well, hey Walker, why don't we use vision? You just taught us about vision and radar. Well, the truth, the answer is, is vision isn't going to work for this application. S specifically, it's not going to work for tracking that I did the bolts in the correct sequence. Why? Because you have a resolution of 1.5 millimeters, and we don't have resolution of 1.5 millimeters in either radar or vision technology. And so this is where the application of spatial intelligence becomes very important. The tolerances in which we have to pick up is important in helping us select the solution that we're going to use for our problem. Exactly, and yeah, just to speak to that vision question as well, because I get it all the time. So we can scale this across entire facilities. So you could, you know, have uh, unique trackers or unique bands on staff as they go to different, uh, you know, different work cells. That's tracked too. So you're not limited by like zones around where the camera's set up. You can scale that, you know, with virtually no limitations. So at my audience wants to, you know, they expect me to find criticism. So. Um, I'll ask you first, wh where, do, where, are the, where are the limitations as you see it? Mm -hmm. as a, or, or you could speak to this. What, where are the limitations as you see it? So where is zero key appropriate? Or where, more importantly, where have you seen people try to apply zero key as an application and it really wasn't the right choice? So within our positioning. Here, I'll give you my mic. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> you can just hold it like here yeah. if you want. Yeah. So in the indoor positioning space, there's give and take. In applications where there's less limitations in terms of line of sight or uh, installation or infrastructure, you're typically limited to your resolution. Take Bluetooth, for example. You can do coarse positioning. You can do coarse positioning to approximately a meter, meter and a half, two meters, but your core infrastructure costs less and there's, there's, there's less infrastructure required. The trade-off to get hyper accuracy at that millimeter level is typically higher density of infrastructure and needing line of sight. We overcome both of those with our listening distance and the way we design our anchor layouts. But really, truly, that is, if there is a limitation, it's going to be that we require infrastructure and that that infrastructure requires line of sight. But to get the accuracy to address these use cases, we need that millimeter level. And right. uh, awesome. I want to I jump in too, because it's something you probably saw as you set up our system. Right now, our system-wide update rate uh, for all devices yes. is lower right. than the competition, but that is something that we are very close to uh, increasing, I think, even since you've got the system. But I just want to say that I didn't find it, it didn't, while I saw that in my benchmarking, it had no impact in, on my application. Right. So, and I suspect it's going to have very little impact on most applications. Especially human-centric stuff like this. Right. If you wanted to track, you know, a forklift moving really fast, that's when you might start right. to have some of those issues. Awesome. So. so, all in. So, obviously, I'm, you know, let's, let's leave the tool piece out. I'm a manufacturer. I want this exact solution. All in, hard, what's my cost on the hardware? That's an easy one. Uh, I'll, give, I'll give Scott my mic. Okay. He's the sales yeah. guy, so he can speak to that. Sure. Really well. Uh, the, the beauty of what we're doing here is we're really showing the power of our starter kit. So the, the hardware that's in this work cell is the hardware that comes in one of our starter kits. Starter kits, eight anchors, uh, four of our trackable devices, so effectively you could have two employees working in the work cell side by side, one device for each wrist, one of our edge compute devices, and a license to our core software. That starter kit's 12,000 US dollars. And for that 12,000 US dollars, you can essentially recreate this as a proof of concept or a, 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 a pilot. An annual continuing? There's so an annual license based on the hardware. We sort of scale into that as you commercialize. Got it. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Sounds great, guys. Tim, I really appreciate the demo. Thanks, dude. Yeah, I appreciate you, brother. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. What, uh, 